Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you all the glory. Thank you, righteous Father. Mighty man in battle, we thank you. Righteous Father, we give you all the glory. There is none like you, Jesus. There is no one to be compared to you, righteous Father. My Creator, my Father, we thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your loving kindness, for seeing us through the week and bringing us to another wonderful time in God's presence. Almighty God, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for your loving kindness. My Creator, my Father, we give you the glory. Thank you, awesome God. There is none like you. God bless you, everyone. God bless you, everyone. God bless you, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, We give you the glory. There is none like you, Jesus. Thank you, awesome God. Our Creator, my Father, we thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your loving kindness. Mighty man in battle, we thank you. Father, we give you all the glory. There is none like you. God bless you all. God bless you all. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. Father, we glorify your holy name. There is none like you, Jesus, for seeing us through the week and bringing us to another time in God's presence today. Our Father, our Creator, we thank you, for you are God, you are not a man. Thank you for what you are doing in our midst. Thank you for what you are going to do again. Righteous Father, we give you all the glory. Father, Almighty God, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, Father, we thank you. Reverence your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. People of God, I want to say God bless you, every one of us. I want to say God bless you for finding time to join family worship hour in altar of prayer fellowship. Whichever denomination you worship, whatever church you attend, that's what I mean. Whether you are not even a Christian at all and you find it necessary in your heart to join altar of prayer fellowship family worship hour it is time for us to hear the word of god it is time for us to hear the word of god it is time for us to hear the word of god and and study the word of god the holy bible whichever denomination you worship it is time for each and every one of us to study the word of god praise the lord let me explain something to us. In order of prayer fellowship, what we preach is what? The Bible, the book of life. What we preach, what we study is the Bible. Not man who study the Bible because this is the book of life. If you are conversant with the Bible, you are a Bible student, you come to understand that this is life itself. This word of God is life. That's what we are going to look at today. In today's family worship hour, say wherever you worship, I want to say welcome to Altar of Prayer Fellowship Family Worship Hour. The time for us as individuals to come together as a team now, individually coming together as a team, as a family, to study the Word of God, the Holy Bible. Individually coming together as a family to study the Word of God, the Holy Bible. And begin to understand what the Bible says concerning us, so that when we are going contrary to God's Word concerning our life, we'll be able to know that this path is not the right path for us. This path will not be pleasing unto God. Praise the Lord. Like we said earlier, this is altar of prayer fellowship family worship hour. wherever you are right now i want to appeal to you pick up your bible pick up your bible pick up your bible pack pick up your jotting materials you can use to jot the word of god down after this message as we're about to study right now you can look at the bible verse again i always encourage people to please take a look at the bible it doesn't bite after you have heard the message pick the bible Pick the word of God you have jotted down. Study it again. Look at different Bible versions. You will come to the realization that God has a, 
a need for you. There's a purpose to which God has kept you going, has kept your life. So people of God, I want to encourage each and every one of us, wherever you, we, are, we are, to let us relax and begin to study the word of God. Just before we start, let us pray. Father Almighty God, my creator, righteous Father, we thank you. Mighty man in battle, we give you all the glory for seeing us through the week and bringing us to your presence again in family worship our Bible study time. Father, we thank you for our families. I thank you for that marriage. I thank you for that husband. I thank you for that wife. I thank you for that child. I thank you, Almighty God, for your people. Daddy, I give you all the glory. For the salvation of our soul, righteous Father, we give you all the glory. There is none like you. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have given thanks. My creator, my Father, we commit this Bible study hour into your hands. Almighty God, we pray, O oh God, you will fill us with the Holy Spirit of God, that we be our great teacher today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Almighty God, I purge myself of any thought or anything that is said. Almighty God, I crown to you. Please use me to minister your word to everyone and also unto me. I want to learn from your word, the Holy Bible. Father, help me, O oh God, to be a vessel of honor to your name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we decree we soak this transmission with the blood of Jesus Christ. We decree, O oh God, that the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Almighty God, we thank you. Jesus Christ, please open our understanding of the word of God. That we might not just be here, but we do out of the word of God after this hour. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Like I said earlier, it is time to study the word of God. We are looking at a very important topic today. That is the narrow path to life and eternity. That pathway to life and eternity. The pathway that will lead, to, lead you to meet with Jesus Christ and live with him in the holiest of holy in heaven. That is what we are looking at today. The pathway to life and eternity. People of God, there is no shortcut. There is no alternative way to get to God Almighty except Jesus Christ. There is no any other shortcut. Whatsoever anybody tells you, don't get deceived. Bible can't lie. I repeat, the Holy Bible can never lie. Men can try to paint the, the word of God. They can try to do it only the way it will suit them. But there is something that can never change. The Bible will not be altered for anyone. God will not change the Bible because of you. Men can decide to rewrite and do their own interpretation. But God cannot rewrite the Holy Bible for your own sake. That's why what we do in altar of prayer fellowship, we look at the Holy Bible, strictly the Holy Bible. It is the Bible we're looking at. Not what one man said. Not about a ministry. Not about a church. Not about any religion, whether Christian or not Christian. What you are looking at is the Holy Bible. What is the pathway to make it to heaven? The holiest of holy. Follow me to the book of Matthew chapter 7. If you are there, please open your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 7. Precisely, I'll be using more of New Living Translation today. By privilege God has given us and the mercy of God, God providing, we have so many versions around us here. Whichever version you understand most, please pick it up. And let us follow the, follow the word of God today and begin to read it and understand what he say concerning us. Matthew chapter 7. We are going to read from verse 13. New Living Translation. The pathway to eternity. To life and eternity. Matthew chapter 7. We are going to read from verse 13. New Living Translation precisely. God bless you, everyone. God bless you, that sister. God bless you, that brother. I want to appreciate God for you for finding time to join this family to study the word of God at this hour of the day. I read in Jesus' name. The word of God said to us in Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 13. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. You can enter God's kingdom only. It is a menu. You can only enter the kingdom of God 
only, I repeat the third time, only through the narrow way, only through the narrow gate. I am going to start from that verse 13 again. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. I read again in Jesus' name. You can enter God's kingdom only the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. The highway, the path to hell, is very wide. The gate is so wide to accommodate as many that have chosen that way. It is the word of God we are reading. It's not my word, neither your word or the word of man. I'm not saying that this is no prophetic issue. This is a serious business. Our soul, where it will end up. The word of God is speaking to us today. That in that word of God in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, he said, the highway to hell, I repeat, the highway to hell is broad, very wide, broad. It can accommodate millions. And its gate is wide for many who choose that way. The gate on that highway to hell is very wide to accommodate as many that have chosen that way. There is a word I took note from there. Those who choose that way. A lot of people on their own choose the way to hell. A lot choose the way to hell. So the right word here is the word choice. We all make a choice. For me, I have made a choice that by the mercy of God, I will work out my salvation with fear and trembling and run my race. My race, they have no room for distraction. My race, they have no room for rumor mongering. My race, they have no room for hearsay, but running my race with total commitment to obey, obeying the word of God, the Holy Bible. But the word of God is telling us today, there is a broad way that leads to hell. And that broad way has a gate. The gate is so wide that it can accommodate as many that choose it. It's a choice. Let me tell you, to live is a choice. To die is a choice. Majority of the decisions we take on this planet Earth, they are based on the choice we make. So you can make that choice today, either to follow the broad way, that had a very wide gate, that can accommodate as many that have chosen that way to hell, or hear what the word of God said. Thank you, Jesus. But the gate to life is very narrow. Or you are going to choose the gate to life. The gate to eternity in peace, in joy, living under the glory of God. You can also make that choice. But I will say, according to the word of the Lord, make the choice to choose this way. The way that lead to eternity of life. The way that lead to life and eternity. A place where there is no death. A place where there is no sorrow. A place where there is no pain. Not even marriage, so that there will not be destruction. A place where there is no labor. A place where you only worship the creator of the heaven and earth, God Almighty, in his holiness. In his holiness. You can choose that part, and that is the part I have chosen. <laughs> and I believe that is the part my wife and my children they are choosing too because we are all running our race. The word of God said in verse 14 of that Matthew chapter 7 but the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult. I repeat, the gateway to life and eternity is very narrow. And the road is difficult. And only a few ever find it. 
Will you be part of that few? That is the question that should be in our heart. I want to be part of the few that will find that road to eternity, the part of the few that find the right way to heaven. I'm not talking about my word. This is the word of God, the Holy Bible. This is what the Holy Bible speaking to you and I today. How do we live our daily life daily? That's the question we should be asking ourselves. How do we live our life daily? Are we living our life to please God in holiness? Or are we living our life to please men? Men or anyone, including pastors. Are you living your life to please pastors? Are you living your life to please Brother Lawrence? Or are you living your life to preach, Sister Evelyn? No! Don't live your life to please anyone. Live your life to please God Almighty alone because there is a time of judgment that is coming. You know, I always ask people, when you are praying to God to war against your enemy and kill them, and you are a sinner. How useful are you to God? You are a perpetual sinner. You continuously live in immoral acts. You continuously live a life, life of lies. You continuously live a life of warmongering, a life of idolatry. What should be idol? A life of idolatry. Married and still going for wrongs. How useful are you to God and telling God to kill for your sake? Why will God kill for your sake? Let us ask ourselves that question. Why will God fight for you when you are not even useful to him, God Almighty? Let us re-examine our life. There is a path, way, that is so wide and very broad. It has a very wide gate that can accommodate as many that are choosing that path to hell. There is that way. Why also there is a way that leads to life eternity. The word of God speaking to us in Matthew chapter 7 verse 14. It is written, I'll read from the Bible. But the gateway to life is very narrow. And the road is difficult. Only a few ever find it. The word of God said, ever find it. Only a few that ever find this way. There is a narrow path that is difficult. Why is it difficult? Because there will be a lot of distraction. You will continue to hear somebody calling you when you have made up your mind. You will continue to hear them coming around. Come, come and see my pastor. Don't tell me about your pastor. No. If you say, invite somebody to utter a prayer fellowship, tell the person, come, let us study the word of God together in altar of prayer fellowship. Don't come and see Brother Lawrence. Don't come and see Sister Evelyn. Come, let us go and study the word of God, the Holy Bible, in altar of prayer fellowship. And the, the reason where a lot of people are being distracted today, they are looking for man, 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 man of God. No. When Jesus Christ was addressed as good master, he rebuked the man. No. Don't call me good master. Jesus Christ. He said, no one is good except the God Almighty in heaven. Now, you will run, you will be calling powerful man of God. With power what? Is it the gateway to heaven? How did they become powerful man of God when it's not the gateway to heaven? The holiest of holy. Rather than begin to fashion your mind towards winning the race that is before you, the race to which Jesus, uh, God is calling you through Jesus Christ, you are getting distracted. People of God, let us daily re-examine our life. That is what I do. Every day of my life, I re-examine my life. For the few people who have ever had a encounter with me directly, they will tell you, I will say the way it is. I will not allow you to lead my soul to hell. You might, even if you've been blessing me before, 
if you choose that you no more want to bless me, no problem. But make sure that you run your race to make heaven. But if you bless me, God is using you. I you now want to turn around to use it to drag my soul to hell. Uh -uh. Our relationship we cut off. I need to make you understand that you need to be dogged in this race. If you are not dogged, if you are not a high fighter, the enemy, which can be in form of your friend, will drag your soul to hell. They will come with sweet words. In all our prayer fellowship, there is no sweet words. We read the Bible, study it, and pray that the Holy Spirit lead us to know it and to apply the Holy Bible in our daily life. That is what we are here for. Not to please anyone. It's to make us to study the Holy Bible and what God expects from us. Let us not be distracted, please. There are so many things that will distract us from making it to heaven. But when you find the right word and the right path to follow that right word, you will find a way to make it to heaven, the holiest of holy. I pray the mercy of God locate you. Because people of God, if there is one thing I fear, I don't want to go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. If there is one thing that comes to ring in my mind, Father, on the last day, whichever one that confess, whether when rapture come or when you call me home, Father, please, I beg for mercy. Do not allow me to end up in hell. You didn't create me for that place. Every day I cry out to God for mercy for the few people who knows me. Father, if by my going out today, my looking has caused me to sin, Father, have mercy upon me. If in the course of saying a word, I utter a word I'm not permitted to say, and the devil wants to begin to use it against me. Oh Lord, have mercy. I pray for mercy daily. You say, why? The word of God said, we are saved by grace. But the word of God said to us, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And immediately the word of God said, God forbid. So we are saved by grace does not give me the authority to live in sin. Joshua the high priest, according to Zechariah chapter 3, if you read from verse 1, was standing before the angel of the Lord, a high priest, so high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan was standing by his right hand to accuse him of his sin. He was putting on filthy garment, high priest. Remember, priests those days are supposed to be one servant of God, but this time he had a filthy garment. And, and because of that filthy garment, while he was be standing before the angel of the Lord, Satan was by his right hand, not the left hand, by his right hand to accuse him. But mercy located him. That's why I want to run my race for mercy. Mercy, Lord. I must make it to heaven by the mercy of God. That's my prayer every day. Oh, Lord, help me. Let us change our mentality. Let's take our relationship from being a member of a church or member of altar or prayer fellowship on to being a heaven candidate. That is the purpose of this ministry. So that you begin to enjoy the liberty to which Jesus Christ died for you. Liberty from sin, liberty from sorrow, liberty from pain, liberty from disappointment, liberty from devourer. It is what part is the total package that Jesus Christ brought for us. Jesus Christ said, I am come. He said, Don't the thief come in to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that day may have life and have it abundantly here yeah, abundantly when life has come with abundance that means it's a total package i'm reading the word of god john chapter 10 verse 10 it's not my word this is the holy bible you need to understand the package that god has for you that is the reason why you will not that's the only way sorry you will not be deceived that is the only way. That's anyone that is, oh, come and see my pastor. Well, it's your pastor. Bible. I will come home. But I always tell anybody, anywhere you find me, and people who know me, you will see me very quiet and listen. If the word that man is preached or that woman will not point me that this part of my life, if I leave it, it will take me to hell, this sinful life. Believe me, the man is wasting his time. He's not talking to me. I'm a very good listener. 
I will just keep quiet. I'll be listening. If that part, that word is teaching daily, anytime you see us preaching in altar prayerfully, it's a privilege. We must talk about sin. That we're also talking to ourselves. Don't go back to sin, Lord. Don't go back to sin. We are talking to ourselves. When you minister, you're not just ministering to the congregation. You are also checking yourself. It's a race. Praise the Lord. Follow me again to the book of Acts of the Apostles. We are looking at the word today. That narrow part, the pathway, the narrow and hard pathway that leads to eternity, life eternity with Jesus Christ. That way. The word of God saying to us in Matthew chapter 7, if you read from verse 13 to verse 14, he said there is a broad way with a wide gate that accommodates everyone that have, is desirous of making to hell. There is a way like that. Or in that verse 14, the word of God said there is a way, a pathway that is so narrow and difficult, only few, few find it. Those who are determined. You will find it in Jesus' name. People of God, let us open our eyes and look at our environment and see if we are living the life that is pleasing unto God. Follow me to the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, reading from verse 8. I'm still going to read again New Living Translation. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 8. Act of the Apostle, chapter 4, reading from verse 8, I read in Jesus' name. The word of God said, here, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, let us note this word. Was Peter at this time speaking for himself? The word, there is no, he wasn't speaking for himself. He was filled what, with who? With the Holy Spirit. Act of the Apostle, chapter 4, reading from verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of our people, are you being questioned today because we have done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state it to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I repeat, let me clearly state to you, to all of you and all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ the Nazareth. The man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. Verse 4, verse 11, sorry. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scripture where he says, The stone that you build and reject has now become the cornerstone. Peter said, you know, it's, it's easier to call the, the stone that they build and reject became the cornerstone. Peter said, now, what the word of God means by that word, the stone that the builder reject, is Jesus Christ. That you, the rulers, crucified, now have become the savior of the world. Peter was speaking to every one of us. The narrow path to, to end life eternity. Jesus is the narrow path to life and eternity. Let me read further. And the word of God said, verse 12, there is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. There is no salvation by any man, not even your pastor, your leader. No salvation from any man. It's the word of God I'm reading. Read Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 12. It is written boldly. 
you don't you see nobody have monopoly over the bible read it it doesn't bite the word of god is saying to you and i he said to me today in act of the apostle chapter 4 verse 12 there is salvation in no one else god has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved god did not give any other name under the heaven on eh, eh, no other name that you and i can be saved except by the name of jesus christ it is stated here we must learn to follow the word of god strictly so that we will not be deceived the issue with man is that we allow people to tell us too many stories i listen but if you don't tell me the word of god i will sign it to you please brother don't be angry all this story you are telling me where will it end my soul you know the world we live especially friends pair friends oh don't worry you know we can settle your problem which world do you do? when do you become a solution giver oh come and join our league association no no it's just a brotherly league from brotherly league they will ask for human help from brotherly oh, oh god have mercy you know i was privileged one day when a brother was telling me how the world have decided to remodernize wickedness the world we live have decided to remodernize wickedness i'll just bring one for today and what was it he was telling me about how they rebrand sexual immorality so that it should be very flexible for people to just go in and be doing it he told me the first one he said there's a relationship that is called with friends with benefit friends with benefit is the one that you don't have any relationship with the person you are just friends the benefit is the sexual part anytime you feel like you can commit se sexual immoral you will just call the person whether she or he anyone can demand for it there is another one in fact i can't show it it's horrible it's called something called it's for that purpose strictly you don't feel you need somebody now now to do immoral things just call it's a point of call people have desired to remodernize sexual acts so that you continue to sin against the body they understand see the power of darkness know what they are doing when they rebranded it they want it to be flexible for you to sin against the blood body and the word of god they say whosoever sin against the body him god will destroy so the enemy know what they are doing the enemies they know what they're doing the past of that they know what they're doing why they now make it so easy for sexual immoral sexual in fact the most cheapest thing to get on this planet earth now is sexual immorality it's so cheap you so many people don't need to pay for it. a lot of people don't pay they also say they part prostitution is no more that involved because even those who don't stay in, in one place you go, the people go to service them. There are so many people outside, they just look for who to service. The word of God said, if you know you cannot keep your body, marry. Paul said, marry, so that you will not be born in loss. Marry. So if Paul has said, marry, so that you will not be born in loss, there is no room. I repeat, no room anywhere to accommodate the new brand names they give to each other. Baby papa, baby mama is an error. Begin to set your mind. Marry now, it is not forbidden. Marry. That's what Paul said. I appreciate God for you for giving me the opportunity to digress a little. It's a little bit worrisome. How a lot of people have chosen the broad way that has a wide gate. They choose it. He said, for as many that choose that path, Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 13, those who choose that path, it's a choice. Why must you choose the path? I have a, I have a way I think. I will never please human being and lead myself to hell. I will not do it. I want pray to God, Father, the day you see me going to and listening to something that is not yours, 
Father, just take my life. Don't allow me to go there. There are kind of prayer. I pray the endurance prayer. Because this so, Father, you gave me one opportunity to live. That's the way I live my life. I pray. And this is my life. I will leave it to please you. This soul must not go to hell, Lord. It's my own desire. It must not go to hell. Not even with gift will this soul be bought over to go to hell. Mm -mm. Father, save me. As dangerous as that kind of prayer, that's the one. I pray those kind of prayer. My wife will go into the closet. Let me tell you. The day she told me, I just look at my wife and say, oh God, continue to straighten this woman. Other men will be angry. She told me one day, say, I always go to the room and pray. God, don't give this man money that will make him go to hell. Don't allow him to have riches that will make him go to hell. You see how my wife prayed. I just bless God for that woman. I'm not saying me pray for myself now. My wife go to a room and she will lock herself there and be praying, God, save this man. Don't allow him to go to hell. You can imagine me, I would just be busy. Assume I was busy wordly. The woman would just be busy canceling it. It will not work. You will not go to that hell. Neither will you drag my soul to that hell. Neither you will you drag our children's soul to that hell. It will not work. You need to understand the mentality of children of God. It's a determination to follow that narrow path. Because when the road is narrow and difficult. Difficult because there are so many temptations that will come your way. Sometimes they will want to box into the corner. But pray that God Almighty, pray beforehand, that God Almighty make a way of escape for you before you get to that land of temptation. There are a lot of things we sign into. Unfortunately, only mercy is available for you now. People, go follow me to the book of Matthew chapter 11. Remember our topic for today is the narrow pathway to life and eternity with Jesus. The narrow pathway to life and eternity with Jesus. Follow me to the book of Matthew chapter 11, reading from verse 27. Matthew chapter 11, I'm going to read from verse 27 to verse 32. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 11, or read really from verse 11 to verse, verse 27 to verse 30, sorry. Matthew chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 27. Jesus Christ said, this is Jesus Christ declaring the word. Jesus, the one who came from heaven. The only son of God Almighty. The one who only the only one that knows how who God is, who came to this life and became flesh like us. He said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 27, My father has entrusted everything to me. Jesus, the narrow pathway. Remember, Paul Peter was telling them that the stone that the builder rejects is Jesus Christ. Is the Jesus Christ that is not saying now that the Father Almighty God has entrusted everything unto him. No one truly knows the Son except the Father. And no one truly knows the Father except the Son. And those whom the Son choose to reveal him. No one knows Jesus Christ except God Almighty. And no one knows God Almighty except Jesus Christ and those who Jesus Christ who to reveal this mystery of whom God and Jesus Christ is. Those are the ones that know him. And how will he reveal to himself to you? Can Jesus begin to reveal his true self to one who has turned himself to a perpetual sinner? You hear the person say, oh, I'm seeing vision. What you are seeing if you are not living a holy life, it's familiar spirit speaking to you. No, not Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit cannot dwell in a vessel. That's why they call it holy. They could have called it filthy. No, it's holy because God represented it here. Holy Spirit cannot dwell in a vessel that is filthy. Let us help ourselves and help our generation. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy body. Are you going through trials? Jesus said, come to me today. 
Have you been experiencing trials in your home? Jesus said, come to me today. I will heal you over a period of time. Have you been going through temptation that you think, how will I overcome this? Jesus Christ said, come on to me. I will heal you over a period of time. I will deliver you. Have you been going through maybe some secret habit that you think, no, I am no man, no, but God Almighty knows. Maybe you engage in some funny things, you always close the door and be happy yourself sexually. Jesus Christ saying, come on to me and I will deliver you. Have you been engaging in ungodly relationship? Jesus Christ said, come on to me. This is a call with your partner, you that man. This is a come with your partner. He said, come on to me, you, you, not individually. Leave the partner. The best you can do for him, pray for him to be saved or pray for her to be saved. Jesus is saying, come on to me. Have you been struggling with a secret attitude? Jesus Christ said, come on to me. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Tell Jesus Christ, come on. Jesus Christ said, come to me. All of you who are weary and carrying heavy body. And I will give you rest. I will deliver you. You will experience a new life. For the word of God said, all things, all things have passed away. When you come to Jesus and Jesus come into your life, old life will disappear. The old life, if you are still living the life you used to live, and you said you are born again, it's an error. Don't lie to yourself. What did I say? Don't lie to yourself. For the word of God said, you cannot be of Jesus Christ. If you read John chapter 3, verse 8, the Bible said, he that committed a sin is of the devil. He could have said it's both ways, in between. No. First John chapter 3, verse 8, read it, it doesn't bite. So if anyone still dwell in sin, the Bible said, you are of the devil if you refuse to repent. You said you have repented, you have changed a certain part of your life. You still live in sin. John chapter 3, first John chapter 3, verse 8, is saying concerning you, you are of the devil. Repent so that you will not die of that sin. It is time for us to examine our life. There is no alternative way to make heaven except through Jesus Christ. And there's a requirement. Jesus can't come into the fifty vessel he has delivered and you expect him to still be there. If you continue in sin, God, Jesus saved you free, set you free from sin. After he has set you free, by grace and mercy, you went about practicing the things you used to do continuously. No change. What is the born again? What makes you born again? So you have less on facts. No, the other part is difficult. You know, a, a sister was sharing with us of recent. The sister said, in where she worshiped. You see how people rebrand sin. That sin, when you sin that people come, you say some people, sin is a weakness, so God allow it. Sin is now celebrated as weakness, a body weakness. You are is weak in this area. Sin is weakness. You see the mentality of man. You think you are fooling man. How can you fool man? You can't think, you nasty think you are fooling God. You can't see. You can only deceive yourself. You cannot deceive God. It's his word. He that committed a sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus has come to destroy the work of the devil in your life, in your marriage. All you need to do, submit unto him. Allow him. Don't say, I've given my life to God, I'm striving, and this wind I've refused to go. Did you ever ask yourself, how did this wind start? A lot of people give their life to God. They say, where will this wind? I was told that when I give my life to God, this wind will go. Yes, it will go. If we go, if it, if it, if it goes out of you, you saw, you will still serve him. What is the, you, God, you know God since the end of from the beginning. He knows your heart. You need to come out from being a, a baby as a baby Christian to become an adulthood. 
in Christian life, that is, you begin to be in holiness, you must have lived a life of total sanctification. Let God boast of you the way God boasts of Job. He said to Satan, have you seen my servant Job? A man, for God Almighty, the creator of the heaven and earth, boasted concerning his servant Job. Have you seen my servant Job? Job chapter 1, reading from verse 8. A man who feared God and eschewed evil. Why don't you get to that level and see if God will not do something unusual on your behalf? Let me tell you, when you are useful for God, when God sees your heart, you are zealous for him. Those who plan to take you down will not live to execute that plan. So you need to understand how God works. Until you take your relation, if you want God to fight for you angrily, you want God to do an unusual fight on your behalf, Take your relationship with God as life and death. I will not let this opportunity pass me by. Until your relationship with Jesus Christ become personally, he become a breath, the breath you breathe. God Almighty will be watching you to grow. But you need to move from mere a born again, what they call branded born again, changing maybe a dress lifestyle or whatever. Taking your life to total commitment and servanthood. Like I tell myself, don't address me as anybody. I'm not interested. Address me as servant of Jesus. I'm a slave of Jesus Christ. I want to make heaven. So also I desire that you, my brothers, my sisters, make heaven. There is no title that will take anyone. No title on this planet that will take anyone to heaven. Mind you, Jesus, God said in Jeremiah, he said this once. They run. I did not send them. Why did he say he did not send them? He said because if they have preached my word and they have caused my people to depart from sin, then I have been the one sending them. But they do not preach the word that will make people depart from sin. Then how will you say God send the witch of the God are you talking about? God Almighty? The holiest of holy? You need to understand how God works. God is not a man. He sees the end from the beginning. He knows after he delivers you totally, if he one day set you free, he knows you will turn around and depart from him. He knows, God Almighty. Sometimes, ah, my wife will just pray, God, please, for the sake you want to let this person know that you sent us, Father, just heal. And God will heal the person. Not also, God will just heal. You know what happened? Even to call you, next time is a problem. The person will call. I didn't say give us because our ministry is not about come and bring money. Mm. If you bless us, God bless you. No problem. But make sure you run your race. Some will not even want to hear you talk. Now they are free from that, that pain. They have decided not to call you. But before then, they call you day and night, twice a day, three times, sometimes midnight. You are a slave of Jesus. You call me and answer. I don't have any problem. If God says prayer, pray. Sometimes I'm praying with somebody. God will just instruct me, just relax. Don't act now. There's something this person needs to correct. Sometimes somebody will notice. I don't know. Maybe there's somebody on this platform. It has happened to you. Just be calling Brother Lawrence and say, Please pray for us. We'll be praying with you, not us. We don't do anything. God is God Almighty is the one who will bring the work. And suddenly you notice that I just stay quiet. There is something you need to correct. You are giving me work that I'm not supposed to do. You are supposed to correct something. So that when you pray as we join faith together, God will answer you speedily. The word of God said, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, I repeat, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. But you don't want great results. You want great results. You don't want to live a righteous life. It's an error. Let us change the way we think. Let us do what? Change the way we think. People of God, there are a lot of people going through things that they need not to even pray. Praise the Lord alone is enough for, for your victory. But what do you do? You refuse to acknowledge him as God. Not even they thank you after he has set you free. Or maybe you just go to your church. When you were in that trouble, you did not remember your church. You remember Brother Lawrence is diving. Now, the, so also we have some servants of God, very genuine, genius for the work of God. When they finish praying with you, and God has healed you. He, did, he will remember your pastor. And you go, that same person will never preach holiness. They don't preach holiness. They are just businessmen collecting your money. Ask is for your soul to be saved. My vision 
in life. I once asked my wife, is it possible for as God, if God give us ministry, because I believe God is working on something. Then, you know, is it possible for us not to collect tithe and offering? My wife said, don't go and commit sin even by saying it to you are going against the word of God. I said, sorry. That is how determined I am concerning souls making to heaven. That's my concern. But I discovered that part of the work God has sent me is for people to fulfill Bible verses. You must live to fulfill it. There is so much you need to gain. There is so much great benefit and joy that awaits you. But your lifestyle is delaying it. You need to understand the mind of God. Isaiah chapter 58. Thank you, Jesus. Let me read Isaiah chapter 58. I'm going to, I'm going to read King James Version. We need to understand them. I just want to digress a little. You need to understand the mind of God so that you will stop suffering. I always say stop suffering. Stop suffering. Thank you, Jesus. The word of God said, Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yokes, and put forth of the finger, and speaketh vanity, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and the darkness be as noonday. If your life change and you begin to reach out to evil souls out there. But what do you do? You just want God to solve your problem. What do you take God for? A lot of people, you just want God to save you, solve your problem. Note it today. There is a pathway that is so broad. There is a very broad pathway and has a wide gate that can accommodate as many that have chosen to go to hell. It is dead. Matthew chapter 7, read from verse 13 to verse 14. There is a pathway, a broad way. So millions that choose to live in sin, they are just pumping to hell. This is But me, I will not follow you people. That's not you. I'm talking about that brother, that sister that refused to repent. I will follow you to go to hell. It's your decision. You can go there. But I'll continue to pray for you. God will have mercy upon you. I'll deliver you from that part of hell. Because hell was not created for man. Hell was created for Satan and the falling angel. But man on their own now decide to join Satan and the falling angel and head up to hell. A place created for spirit. As well as the lake of fire. Because hell we have to vomit the ones he has. And everything end up in lake of fire. Including the false prophet you are following. Everyone who are following false prophets. Their place of judgment is lake of fire. Why will I follow a man as he be giving me my money? And he will not tell me where my soul will end up. That if I am an occultic man, my soul will end up in hell. I will just be collecting their money and say it is well with you. Why is he well? Somebody on his way to hell is well. Somebody on our way to hell. How can he be well with that person? Let us be very factual. Let's ask ourselves a question. What is committing sin? Every dumb and bad thing, anything the Bible says don't, is the one the person is doing. You tell the person it's well. It is not well. Let us look at ourselves, I bought to and tell ourselves. In sin, living in sin is not well. Because there is a reward for those who live in sin. It is eternity in hell, not in life. In death, perpetual death. We need to change the way we think. It is painful that a lot of people have made their mind up. But must you join those who made up their mind to go to hell? Let me tell you, you can be a member of any church. Home. That's why in altar of prayer fellowship, we always welcome you. Wherever you have gone to worship, God bless you. Come, let us study the word of God. This is the Bible, it doesn't bite. Let us hear what the word of God said to us. And see, even in the last one year, they have told you these things. If they have mentioned these things to you in your church, if they are not, then there's an error. You need to begin to run your race. 
The word of God speaking to us in that Matthew chapter 11. I'm reading verse 28 now. Then Jesus said, said, Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy body, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you. Let me teach you. Because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the body I give is light. What, you see this narrow path we have talked about, this narrow path that is difficult. Jesus Christ said, the requirement is not that it's impossible to be able to, to overcome it. My yoke is easy. You can bear it. I give you the grace to overcome trials. I will give you the grace to overcome temptation. I will give you the grace to overcome storm. I will give you the grace and the power to overcome evil mountain. And you will get to have the holiest of holy. I God, God is speaking to you. Jesus is speaking to you and I today. He said his yoke is easy and his body is light. So the requirement he gives to make heaven is difficult on the narrow path because there are, the, 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 um, the, uh, are decisions to make because there will be a lot of destruction. But, I repeat, but with Jesus on your side in you, you will be able to make it to heaven. When you have Jesus living in you, he will lead you strangely. Have you seen a man when a God, God tell him, follow me, to man, you will look stupid. Let me tell you, every action I take in the eyes of people who knows me, including my living mother, I look stupid. This action I take, any action I take looks stupid in the eyes of man. And when I mean action, I'm talking about serving God. This narrow path has no room for friendship. This narrow path, no room for friendship. My mother died. See, after God Almighty, I, I respect, I fear God like that is, I fear God. My children, then my mother and my wife. My mother knows that this young man, so he has gone to another level. I have taken my relationship with God to another level. Not even any, my wife I will not be a distraction. I will never be a distraction to my wife making heaven. That is the mentality you need to wear. That is the mentality you need to carry. Because if you don't have that mentality, there are one million and one brothers and sisters out there. They are waiting to cause you to sin. And they don't come empty handed. They came with serious demonic powers carrying in their body to make sure that they influence you. But when you are determined, mm, when you are determined, they will not be able to drag your soul to hell. That's why in altar of prayer fellowship, strength to have this kind of activity going on. In altar of prayer fellowship, two things we do. We strive to live the Bible. And we turn our lifestyle to violent lifestyle two ways. Why? Because why Jesus Christ was on earth here, the word of God said, and Jesus prayed like, and sweat came out of his body like blood. Jesus Christ prayed and sweat came out of his body like blood. And you will not pray. You will just be singing, I have decided to follow Jesus. Many who are singing that song, they are living in sin. How do you sing that song and your immoral act has not changed? How do you sing that song and hatred, you that woman to your husband is there in your mind? You that man, you have so much hatred for your wife and you are singing that song that have decided to follow. You are not following Jesus. Don't deceive yourself. You continue to carry hatred towards you, your wife, or, or your husband, whichever one. And you are singing that song. It's self-deception. It's what? Self-deception. You better repent. Because if you die in that sin, mm, if you die in that sin, the word of God said, it is better no one was born than to end up in hell. It's better you didn't even come to this planet Earth. And not come and die in sin and head up in hell, it is better. If the word of God said it's better for you to enter heaven, he said enter, eternal life, with one hand made than to enter hell with your own body. You can imagine the pain. 
You know, a lot of people think that this thing is a movie. It's not a movie, it's real. The Bible said there will be time for a human being to be born in Ecclesiastes and the time to die. Let us ask ourselves this question. Do people not give birth to human beings today? People die also today as we are talking. So Bible verse is fulfilled. Let us ask ourselves, is it hell that will not be fulfilled? So one, we, one part of the Bible will be fulfilled. Another part will not be fulfilled. You see error, how we think? No, God understand. God that said it understand, right? Let us ask ourselves questions. Sorry the way I'm talking. I'm a little bit not on the good side because people who claim to be born again, they are still living in sin. Let us repent. It's time for us to change the way we live. Let us begin to crown to God to lead us. Follow me to the book of Romans chapter 1, please. We are looking at the topic today, that narrow path that leads to life eternity with Jesus. The narrow path that leads to eternity, life eternity with Jesus. Romans chapter 1, I'm going to read from verse 21 quickly. I read in Jesus' name. I'm reading New Living Translation. Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 21. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. Let's all start from there. They know God, they knew God, but refused to worship him as God. Let me ask you, you worshiping God, you are a member of Occult, you say you are worshiping God, God Almighty. You worshiping God, you belong to one society. You say you are worshiping God. Don't deceive yourself. It's not God Almighty you are worshiping. You are worshiping something. Else. You can be singing the way other people sing it. Right inside you, they, your, your spirit man is not communicating with God. Don't deceive yourself. You need to repent today. You are worshiping God. You are singing. Your lifestyle is still filthy. You need to repent because you are not worshiping God. This is the word of God. The word of God says, yes, they knew God. But they wouldn't worship him as God or even give in times, they began to think of the foolish idea of what God was like. They begin to reason their own, the way God looked like. They tell themselves, we sin to commit, and we sin not to commit. They're helping them generation, their life, with sin. They, they, they choose which part is holy. Oh, God, I'm missing. As a result, their mind became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they instead become utter fools in their mind. They thought they are wise. But God, what of God is saying, they are the greatest fool. And instead of worshiping the glorious ever living God, here, here error. Instead of worshiping the ever glorious living God, the glorious ever living God, they worship idols made to look like mere people and birds, animals, and reptiles. Is that not what is happening in our present day generation, please? Is that not what is happening to me? They, instead of man to worship God, they have decided to be watching images. That's why you see different image. You know, the different, they call them religion, different. They worship what they, they don't put one image there and be worshiping it. And then God is there. You know, I came across one brother. I didn't know, they said he's a senior pastor. I came across one, he addressed himself as senior pastor. I later checked his, video, his messages. It's about prosperity. And I just shook my head. I came across him. I never knew what made me to talk to him. I just saw him, he was putting on handband. One church handband. You need to see the way he was holding the handband. I see that is inside where Jesus Christ is, inside the handband. And I asked him, my brother, what is this handband for? He said, no, you know handband. No, 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 God. I asked him, are you telling me that the power that created the heaven and the earth, God Almighty, Jesus Christ, is inside that handband? Handband, that is where Jesus Christ is. You need to deliver yourself from mentality. And so, the brother, I'm sorry, I'm very sorry. Believe me, that was the period I, thought I met him, I just say hello to him, but that was the first time we had time to talk. I said, brother, just go ahead and go and try that thing and run your race. 
It was later I got to understand I said he's a senior pastor. Senior pastor. Ross, help your generation. Life go beyond making money. The vision you are seeing might not, I repeat, might not be of God. There are a lot of people who are living in that self-deception. A lot of us. They just carry a handband. As if you mean God Almighty. God Almighty is living inside handband. God Almighty. Maybe he does not understand what the word of God said. God said in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, he said, I give unto you power. He didn't say, I put it inside handband. God Almighty said, the power is in you if you can manifest it by faith. I give unto you power to trade upon serpent and scorpions and over the powers of thy enemy, and no, nothing shall by enemies unto you. The boy is transferring that power from the Bible into handband. Slavery mentality. I pray God deliver him. People of God, let us deliver ourselves from this slavery mentality. Sinful slavery mentality. Or especially people, anywhere, just here. They say, one man is in social place today. You see everybody running there. This man is in social place today. Everybody is running there. They said, Jesus Christ said, we should depart from sin. You are not running your race. But once there is a man, you are just running. Busy. Run. You should come to our prayer. Run to our prayer to come and learn and study the word of God in holiness. I repeat, in holiness. Stop depriving you yourself of the privilege that God has given you to live far from sin and make heaven. The liberty to win Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you, sometimes you feel that if God has not done something, he's doing something, maybe there's something you need to do for God. Yes. You are, let me tell you what how our life is. God can tell us, go and be feeding people today. We don't have a choice. That we feed people. God did not say, after you feed people, you are not going to preach my word. That's why you are my slave. You are a slave. I'm a slave of Jesus. After you, you, you feed people, you will also preach my word. You don't have a choice. Me, I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice. If God said, pray, call that sister or that brother to pray with the sister, I don't have a choice. I'll just be praying. If tomorrow I'm praying and he said, no, just pause. You think God don't talk? God speak to us, I'm telling you. I'm not saying dream. You can just say, just pause. Pause this prayer. Let this person correct the ways. I want to transform my life. I want to transform my, transform my power into this lady. I want to use her as a vessel. But she too needs to deliver herself. Praise the Lord. The word of God speaking to us in our Romans chapter 1 verse 20. Reading from verse 21. Now we are now in verse 24. Or let me read from verse 23. And from verse 23. And instead of worshipping the glorious ever living God, they worship idols made to look like mere people and beg and animal and reptiles. Verse 24. So God abandoned them to do what so to do whatever shameful thing their hearts desire. Because they refuse to worship God the way they need to worship God. God left them alone to do those shameful things that they had. They had to, it's you they had a desire. God said, I will not even change your lifestyle. I want you to perish in this thing. I'm reading the Bible. As a result, they did veil and degrading things with one with each other's body. And they are calling themselves name now. You know everywhere. They have a name for them. The, the society, the world have branded that the world should accept them. Because they refuse to. They begin to do wicked things. It's not like those people that do those funny things. There are other people. They don't even do all those wicked things. But they continue to deprive themselves of the job. Oh, you see somebody will go and draw one thing on his hand. The body that God created, you are coloring it. God Almighty. You want to tell him the need create the body well? People of God, let us re-examine our lifestyle. But if you have already done it, just by faith, use the blood of Jesus Christ to clean it up. Put if he's there, he's no more there. Because even the sinful nature we live in, it is the blood of Jesus Christ that will cover it on the day of judgment. So when he's supposed to speak against us, mercy locate us. Praise the Lord. The word of God said to us, 
They traded truth about God for a lie. They are looking for ways to please the way they live their life. They have turned the word of God, the truth of the word of God into a lie. You know, God said we should love. Love now has turned something. You know how they do their things. It's love. The Bible said love one another. That love now make you live like animal. Love. And you have in your eyes, see we are lion. Lion. May lion. Mount may lion. You've seen it anyway. How confused the world has gone to. Let us help our generation. Let us stop going against the word of God because there is a time for judgment. What did I say? There is a time, of, time for judgment. The word of God said, one thing that catches my attention is that man have decided to worship man, the what God created than worshiping God. Let me read further. They traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worship and serve things God created instead of the creator himself. A lot of people, you see them running to go and lie in front of one man. Oh, is that that the God bless? Why are you lie? So don't lie down for a man. You have not finished lying down for God Almighty. You are lying down for man, man or man, man created by God. You are worshiping man, man. And the Bible said it is wrong to worship man rather than worshiping God. Is there? But why they have choose to worship man rather than worshiping God? It's an error. Help your generation. The word of God said they trade out the truth about God for a lie. So they worship and serve things God created instead of the creator himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desire. Even the women turn against the natural way to have sex and instead indulge in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sex relationship with women, born with laws for each other. Men did shameful things with other men as a result of this sin. They suffer within themselves the penalty they deserve. There is a penalty for it. As I've read it, I'm not going to emphasize more on it. But remember, the word of God said, that act that you are engaging in, that is an abomination in the sight of God, the word of God said there is a penalty. That penalty is so painful. It's painful. Help your generation. Help your life. Deliver yourself from this slavery or sin mentality. The word of God said in verse 28, of that Romans chapter 1, since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. He allowed them to be doing those things. They refused to acknowledge God. They are looking for shortcut. God said he led them to do those stupid things that will be painful to them. He allowed them. And when he allowed them, the thing must manifest. You will be the one suffering for it. Suffering for it. We pray God mercy will look at you. In this aspect, nobody is persecuting anybody. We are not condemning anybody, but we are rather saying, do not engage in this act. This statement we are making today, we are not judging, please. No one is judging any altar of prayer fellowship. We don't condemn people. Those who know us physically will tell you. No matter what you are doing that is wrong, we always tell you, you have to find a way to come out from it. We will never judge you, but we are only pointing you to those things that you are doing wrong that are contrary to the word of God. And the word of God said there is punishment for it. And now when the punishment comes, you will not be looking for who to solve it for you. No, you can avoid it. You can avoid that punishment from taking place by not doing those things that God said, thou shalt not do. Don't do them. Don't do them. There are some men. No, I, I'm a man. I'm my constituency. They are business. Is testing women. So men, they have made it a business now. They just be marrying and divorcing, marrying and divorcing. Remember, there is judgment. There is judgment. You just testing, testing. You have turned yourself to test that. So women, uh, their business also is not my constituency, my wife's constituency because it's a woman. But we all join faith together and continue to minister the word of God as human beings. 
The own is to look for who to help them. What a wicked generation. People of God, let us help our generation by departing from these wicked ways. Praise the Lord. In Proverbs chapter 14, in Proverbs chapter 14, the Bible is telling us the new lifestyle we should live. The new way that we should live in life. Let us run this heaven raise in holiness. If you look at the word of God in Proverbs chapter 14, I might just read briefly, then as we round up, Proverbs chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 1. I read in Jesus' name. The word of God is telling us how to live the life we should live. A wise woman build her home, but a foolish woman tear it down with her own hand. Verse 2. Those who follow the right path fear the Lord. Those who take wrong path despise him. This is how we should live. Verse 3. A foolish proud talk become raw that beat him. But the words of the wise keep, him, keep them safe. People of God. The word of God is for warning us today. That we have a way we should live to please him. And that we will have peace in our home. As a father, there's a way you must live to please your children and your wife. You must be there for them. But these days, what do we have? When the father is being, when you are looking for a father, is somewhere. In this part of the country where we live, this part of the world, most of the fathers, you are looking for them. They are somewhere. They are just give back, they, they transfer. Even if nobody, government did not put them there, they put themselves there. This is the only part of the world I've ever heard that somebody will deliberately decide to commit crime so that God will, government will condemn them to jail. They said they prefer being in jail so that they won't pay bill. Their fathers, own, their children are there, their fathers are in jail. That is an error. And you think it's normal? It's not normal. Let us help our generation. It is not normal. Let us help our generation. Every one of us, let us begin to examine our life. Whether you are a minister of God or you are not, let me tell you, in this end time era, I was telling somebody when we started this end, beginning of this year, I said this year is going to be a very glorious year for people. God is going to shower his joy upon people, but he's going to come with a lot of battles. This year, there will be a lot of battles. And the reason why is because of the glorious blessings that await people. You must fight to win those battles. You will be victorious if you live a holy life. People of God, let us begin to examine our life as we live to please God daily. Finally, according to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, reading from verse 37, let us go there, please. The way we must live to please God. Act of the Apostles, chapter 2, what do we need to do? Thank you, Jesus. People of God, let us re-examine our life. Let us begin to re-examine ourselves what we must do daily. Act of the Apostle chapter 2, reading from verse 37 to verse 39. I read in Jesus' name. The word of God said, Peter's words pierced your heart, and they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, verse 38, Each of you must repent of your sins. And turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. They were asking, What do we do, people of God? That is the question we should be asking ourselves for those who still live in sin. When Peter and the other disciples were preaching, the word that the priest so touched the heart of the congregation that the people need had to ask Peter and the other disciples, what do we who are hearing this word, what do we do? And Peter said only one word to them, repent and be baptized. It was a phrase. People of God, is there anyone among us today? Is there anyone among us today that is still battling with that statement, or that is having challenges, and that statement is coming to your mind, what then do I do? Because I live in this sinful world. The word of God to you today, 
exactly what Peter said to the people. Repent of your sin. Wherever you are on this earth, and you are still battling with one secret habit, the Bible is speaking to you today. Repent from your sin. The end is near. The end is near. Whichever one comes first, let me tell you, you are afraid to die. Let me tell you, death will come. But what you should be afraid of, God, do not allow my soul to end up in that hell. That is not where you created for me. I will not go there, Lord. Are you there today? You are out there, you are battling with this question. What do I do? To live to please God, you have to repent from your sins. There are people who need to cry unto God on this platform. I don't know who that, there's a, somebody who need to cry unto God on this platform. When I meet foundation, I want to be specific this time. The foundation is that the genesis of the contract you enter is 40. The genesis of what you, the relationship or contract you enter is 40. Cry unto God to heal that foundation by his blood. The battles you have been fighting will be solved easily. God will tell you what to do. And you will see the wind, that wind, that wicked wind will just die off. There are persons here. Part one is a sister. Wherever you are, there is a contract you enter into, an agreement that is faulty. Seek the face of God. He will personally reveal to you what you will do. Don't ask me. I'm not going to answer. I'll tell you the details beyond this. Seek the face of God and cry out to God, Father, concerning this contract I enter into. Oh Lord, if it's 40, what do I do? He will tell you. And when he tell you, take action. Allow God to fight your battle. What do I say? Take action. There is somebody again who need to seek the face of God. God has a special assignment for you. And the more you delay it, you are exposing yourself. God has taken over your battles and he's just looking at you. My son, my daughter, will you do my work? Will you do my work? Remember we read that Bible verse today. Jesus Christ said, my yoke is easy and my body is light. Will you do my work? God is saying, I pray God Almighty will reveal himself to you. I also want to make you understand that brother or that sister. Depart from the spirit of fear. What did I say? Depart from the spirit of fear. Leave fear, fear would. Let me tell you, it is impossible for those who God has called to do his work for God to abandon them. Let it be that somebody came to tell you something. That's not right. Let it be that you had a bad dream or you had a whatever. Or you read in the book and you discover that it's like you are going to struggle with something. Let me tell you, if your lifestyle is straight with God, God will never abandon you. Those wind will die off. I want to appeal to that brother, that sister across the nations of the earth, wherever you are. It is time for you to make up your mind today. It is time for you to make up your mind today. And said enough is enough to worldly lifestyle. I have made up my mind to accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and personal Savior, my Lord and personal Savior. Let it be your song today. Let it be the slogan. Let it be the thought in your heart. Let it be the declaration you have. From today, I've made up my mind. I will not live the life of evil anymore. I want to live the new life that Jesus has proposed for me. I want to live the new life that Jesus has proposed for me. I want to live the new life that pleases God. I want to experience the hand of God in a new way. And I can show you, God is going to come into your life. God will come into your life if you can open your heart unto him. And he will begin to do some strange and miraculous things in your home, in your life. That situation that I've been written of, he said, no hope. I have good news for you. If you can make up your mind, you that brother. They said there is no hope. Even doctors say no hope. I have good news for you. The one who created your life is saying to you by the word of God today, in Ezekiel chapter 37, he said, I will put my breath in you. God is speaking to you. And I will give you a new life. But you have only one choice. You're going to give your life to God. 
and you become a servant of God. You become a slave to Jesus. God will restore you. If you are determined, he knows your heart. If you change, he will restore you. Whatever has been written against you, let it be that brother or that sister. The people that gave birth to you said they have used your glory for ritual. You cannot amount to something. I have good news for you. God will create an alternative glory and restore it back to you. You become like a shining light again, but you only have one choice. God will not do that thing just because he wants to do it. He will do it because he wants his name to be glorified. And he wants to use you as his vessel to win other souls. He wants you to give up what worldliness you are living. That worldly lifestyle you're living. He said he wants you to give it up. And he will beautify you and make you whom he wants you to be. And your life will now radiate the glory of God and will bring others who are also experiencing your own situation unto him. God wants to use you as an example to tell the world that those who the occultic people have wasted, him, God, will give life back to them. Is he a seed of affliction? I have good news for somebody. God is saying as you speak to you that Jesus Christ already paid the price. The word of God said the punishment that brought peace to us was on Jesus. And by strife we are healed. Isaiah chapter 53. You need to understand you, that sister, that situation is not unto death, that sickness. The only thing that will make it lead to death, and please, I beg you, don't, don't be too late. If if you refuse to, if you refuse to give your life to God today, make up your mind. Who would, somebody will come across this message. Make up your mind immediately. You come across this message. I'm not saying you can, you might not follow us on altar prayer fellowship. But once you come across this message, make up your mind to accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and personal Savior. And begin to run your race. Run your race in holiness. Let me tell you, there is no man on earth that will save you from that situation. But God said, I am willing to have mercy today. He is ready to save you. But after he has saved you, you cannot go back to the world old. You, that sister, you will come across this message. After he has saved you, you cannot go back to the world. Until you make up your mind and determine, you will not see the hand of God. You need to make up your mind to be determined. Let me tell you, as we close, people, there are powers of darkness. When Jesus Christ was born, the king decided to even kill every male child. All in the name to try to stop the destiny the purpose to which God Almighty sent his only begotten son to this world, where well, he cannot, God revealed himself to Joseph. And the rest is history. God did his own work. So also, there are so many people. What they want is for you not to fulfill your destiny. God Almighty is today, as he speaks concerning me, he told me, as you follow him, I look for solution to issues of life for years until he told me, my son, I am your solution. Follow me. And if you follow me, to man, you will look stupid. I did, when God spoke that word to me, I never knew what it was. It was later I began to understand what it's like. To man, I, you will look stupid because your lifestyle will not conform to the worldly lifestyle. The lifestyle will not go more and encourage all these things that people do. They are not godly. Today is exactly what is going on. Even your life, that sister, that is what will take place. You must be transformed by the power of God. And what will hinder it? It is your sin. I want to thank God for everyone. As many that want to give their life to God and say, enough is enough. I don't want to live this sinful life anymore. People of God, I want to encourage you today. What you simply do, that brother, that sister. If you can, you can say it yourself. Rededicate your life to God or accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior freshly for those who just want to give their life to God for the first time. All you need to do, just say these few prayers after me. But you can say it in your own way. But make sure you say it from the depth of your heart. Crying unto God for mercy. So wherever you are, and you want to give your life to God, you want to say enough is enough. I am tired of this worldly lifestyle. Please just follow me. My God and my Father, Righteous Father, my creator, 
I thank you. Jesus Christ, I thank you. This day, I confess, I am a sinner. Have mercy upon me, Almighty God. Please forgive me my sins. Please wash away all my iniquity from me and make me holy to please you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, I call unto you today, come into my life. Come and be my Lord and personal Savior. And grant me the grace never to go back to sin again. In the name of Jesus Christ, my God and my Father, have mercy. Give me one more chance to live to please you. Thank you, Almighty God. For in Jesus Christ, mighty name, we have prayed. If you have said that few prayer point, that brother, that sister, that child, people of God across the nations of the earth, members of altar of prayer fellowship, let us join faith with that brother and that sister, that child. Let's cry out to God for mercy, joining faith with them. Pray that the same grace and mercy that locate you, God will extend it unto them. My creator, my father, we crown to you this day. Have mercy. Daddy, we crown to you concerning that brother, that sister, that have decided that enough is enough to sinful lifestyle. Almighty God, I crown to you. Please, the same grace and mercy that located me, that delivered me from the sinful nature of life. Father, I crown to you. Please extend that grace and mercy unto that brother, that sister, and that child in the name of Jesus Christ. My God and my Father, we crown to you. Please, in your mercy, do not allow these ones to go back to sin. In your mercy and according to your word in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Father, you said, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God, for I will strengthen thee. And I will uphold thee with my right hand of righteousness. See, as the Lord God Almighty, Father, in your mercy, let this your word become manifest in the life of your people. Strengthen them, O God, as they have made up their mind on this new journey in holiness. And uphold them, O God, with your right hand of righteousness. To you alone, almighty God, be all the glory. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have prayed. I want to bless God for everyone who has been a part of this ministry, who has been part of this today's Bible study. We appreciate your presence here. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to strengthen you. Remember, in all our prayer fellowship, God leading us has given us different platforms to which we study the Word of God. In altar prayer fellowship, there's a WhatsApp platform that God leading my wife daily, using her to send words from the Bible across the nations of the earth. If you want to be part of it, all you just need to do, just drop your number. Say, please add me to the platform on WhatsApp. I want to be part of that WhatsApp platform. Add your number and you put your number, your name on our messenger, and I can assure you, from that moment, once your number is added, you begin to receive daily biblical messages, and God Almighty will continue to strengthen you. Also, I want you to know, later today, we will be having our prayer hour. Prayer hour is 6 p.m. New York time, a time for people of God to come together and pray. After ministering the word of God of holiness, we also pray. So, if you want to be part of it, all you need to do is to drop your name, just say, I want to be part of that prayer hour by 6 p.m. New York time, on our messenger, and I can assure you, we will send you the link on our Zoom platform. And as you log in, you'll be part of a wonderful experience. 6 p.m. New York time today. It might be midnight in your time. It might be 12 p.m. in some part of the world. But I want to tell you, you'll be a wonderful, it'll be a wonderful experience for you. On Wednesday, it's our Bible study hour, still on our Zoom platform. Prayer uh, Bible study, 6 p.m. Friday, on Thursday, God using his daughter, my wife, to study the word of God with other women. It's always a wonderful time in the presence of God for the women. The women are having a wonderful time on Thursday, 6 p.m. New York time, still on the Zoom platform. On Friday, prayer time, another time to pray. So on weekend, it's fire for fire. We pray and cry unto God to deliver us from powers of wickedness and to make a way for us where there seems to be no way. Friday on our Zoom platform, the same time, 6 p.m. New York time. You want to be part of it? Just drop your, 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 your message on our, on our 
messenger. I want to be part of that Zoom platform. We'll send you the link. I will be a part of it. On Saturday, God using his, his daughter, my lovely wife, to minister the word of God, teaching the women the word of God. The men are benefiting. I'm also a blessing. He's blessing me too. God is blessing me. 11 a.m. New York time on Saturday, the women are having a time studying the word of God. 2 p.m. on Saturday, the children, to me, believe me, it's a one in a lifetime experience, are experiencing the presence of God in a new way. 2 p.m., this is also still on our Zoom platform. You want to be part of that experience? Just drop your name or your number or a message that I want to be part of it on our Zoom platform. I can assure you, you will have a wonderful experience. And also, let us see, state it here. We have a year of our media August convention coming up. The conference is coming up in the month of August. By next Sunday, we'll be announcing the day specifically. People of God, it is going to be an experience like never before. And I believe God Almighty has a purpose which he has proposed that he has designed this experience to come. A lot of souls will be set free. Power of God will be made manifest. And God will be reaching out to souls. People of God, let us get ready. It's going to be a wonderful experience. You want to be part of it? You can drop a message for us. You want to support the ministry in that area? You can drop a message for us. Just let us know. You want to be part of that experience. And also, you want to be part of those who will be present? Just let us know. God Almighty leading you. I pray he will bless you also in the name of Jesus Christ. People of God, I want to thank God for everyone who has been part of this experience. I want to tell you, I really appreciate everyone. But as we appreciate you for being part of this experience, Make sure you use the word of God as, be, as, it, as all the words of Bible verse that came in. Study them. Let it be part of you so that you'll be liberated. you begin to live in the liberty to which Jesus Christ has set you free. To God alone be all the glory. I want to thank God for everyone. As we depart from this platform, we are not departing from the presence of God. We pray that the presence of God will continue to be with us in the name of Jesus Christ. Almighty God, my Father, we thank you. Righteous Father, my God, we commit every one of us into the hand. As many that are connected to this program, this our Lord, my Father, in your mercy, your people shall not be put to shame in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we crown to you in your mercy. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I crown to you in your mercy. Lead, guide, and direct us, O God, even as we enter into a new week today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we crown to you. Let our path, O God, for you said the path of the justice as a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day. Father, O God, let our path, O God, Begin to radiate the glory of God all the days of our life in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we crown to you for divine protection. Father, make us immune to the device of the enemy. Keep us safe, O God, to we meet on this same platform next Sunday. To you alone, righteous Father, be all the glory. In Jesus Christ, mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want to say God bless you and have a wonderful week ahead. In Jesus' name.